Good morning, Vietnam. Welcome, fellow adventurers. Today is day 78, and we have just arrived in Ho Chi Minh City, well known to many people as Saigon in Vietnam. We had to drive through the city and see all of the buildings, and it's quite a bustling city. The French had come to Vietnam, and they had built beautiful canals and elegant boulevards with historic French colonial buildings. Quite a wonderful city. And we drove through the city in order to get to the Coochie Tunnels, which was about an hour outside of town. We have Nick here as our victim who is going to go into the tunnel. And let's see where he ends up. See you, see you Nick. I hope to see you again soon. I didn't know too much about these tunnels, but somebody on the ship said, you cannot miss this, Carrie. So we asked the guide to take us there, and I am so glad he did. When we got there, it was such a surprise because during the Vietnam War, I was fairly young and wasn't paying too much attention in junior high and high school. So it was quite a history lesson going to Ho Chi Minh. The Vietnamese people built tunnels that reached 120 miles underneath the ground that they lived in during the war. And many of these tunnels, the Americans knew nothing about. Visiting these tunnels was a huge educational experience and it was quite funny for me because my son Nicholas knew all about this. He is quite the history buff and he shared so many experiences with us and actually told the guide so many things about the tanks and artillery and equipment that the guide did not even know. The tunnels were originally started during the French occupation and during the Vietnam War they were continued and people were living in them to escape all of the hazards of war. In fact, there was quite a population of insurgents that were basically against the American fighting for their freedom. And you could see huge holes in the ground where B-52 bombs had just bombed huge areas. And luckily, at least in the areas I see, did not bomb some of these tunnels. At one point, the Americans were also using the tunnels for strategy in fighting the war. But there was a lot of psychological warfare. There were these booby traps that were underground that you could fall in, and it would be devastating if you did. You would never be able to get out of these things and have a very, very slow death. To get into these tunnels were very small openings and Nicholas crawled down into them and came back up holding like the top of these that were covered with different types of foliage and leaves and things and you didn't even know there was a tunnel below. In fact, for about three to five minutes, I did crawl through one of the tunnels and then I did escape because it was extremely hot while we were there, even though Nicholas continued on and was in the tunnel for several feet and about 10 minutes until he came out on the other side. It was very interesting to see how the people lived in these tunnels. They went down to three different levels of where they would either hide or they would be living, especially during the day, and then come out at night when they needed to. There was also air pockets and air holes that they would have that would be camouflaged that you wouldn't see them in rocks or in termite mounds. They would put in these air holes so that they would have fresh air. There was a little museum that showed munitions, bombs, and all kinds of AK-47s and other types of munitions that were left behind by the Americans. Traveling back to the city, we stopped to have lunch, and we had the traditional soup that the Vietnamese people eat called pho, P-H-O, and it has all kinds of noodles, very hot broth, and many, many fresh types of vegetables from bean, sprouts, onions, and other vegetables, along with a little bit of meat in this soup. And it was quite good. 
Next, we took a tour to the War Museum, and this was so devastating and so difficult to go through, where you could see the devastation throughout this country that was done from war. I can remember as a little girl, my father always told me that war was hell, but it really was real for me going through this museum, seeing the amount of devastation and people's lives being turned upside down. But even the whole idea of Agent Orange, which was a chemical that was used to deforest this country and the damage it did to this country and to its people. This is a massive herbicide and poison. It's chemically very similar to Roundup what kills a lot of plants and, and weeds and things like that in our country that has done a lot of damage to us as humans. And the same thing happened in Vietnam. There were so many birth defects and things that had happened to babies that would be born during that period of time, not to mention the devastation to the countryside where whole forests, trees, and foliage had been destroyed. I never really understood why we were in Vietnam and there was a lot of protesting while I was in high school against it and most people were at one point so much against the war that it did end because it was a unwinnable war. In the museum it showed decorated soldiers that were against the war and wouldn't even send their men anymore. You could not help but feel upset and wondering why, why were we there? But there was one slide that I took a picture of and it was so clear about why we were there. It was about the money. World War II cost 341 billion. Korea cost 54 billion and the Vietnam War cost 676 billion dollars and someone was profiting from that. There were 58,000 Americans killed in that war. And my heart was broken when I left that museum. And my only question is, why? On a brighter note, the next day we went to the Mekong River Delta. We drove for about an hour away to get on the Mekong River, which is a river that starts all the way in the Himalayas and it empties into the ocean. Along this river, the Vietnamese are growing all kinds of crops and it's very fertile in this area, as well as having all kinds of fish farming. And they are big eaters of fish. In fact, if you go in a restaurant, they will take the fish right out of the water there to prepare your meal. Continuing down on our boat ride, we were able to get out and see what it was like being in the village. And you could see them having their wash hanging out. We got out a couple of times where we could see that they were making different types of coconut candies. In another village, they were beekeepers and there was fruit trees everywhere, breadfruits and all kinds of other tropical fruits, papaya, banana, coconuts, everything you could think of that would be in the tropics. On the way back to the bus, they gave us coconut water fresh out of the coconut to drink. Going back to Saigon, it was about an hour drive and then getting back to the city, it is such a hustle and bustle, motorcycles everywhere nowadays. And they have Uber in Saigon, in fact, they are motorcycles with Uber drivers. And I got a couple pictures of a helmet or two of Uber drivers that had gone into the coffee shop to get some coffee. And one more time, we ran into Gustav Eiffel. He had been the architect on the post office in the main square in Saigon. I am always so baffled how he has gotten around the world in so many places to do his architecture. After a long day of sightseeing, we couldn't help ourselves but have another foot massage before the end of the day. Our next stop is going to be in North Vietnam at Halong Bay. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and I'm looking so forward to being there. 
in closing, my wish for you is that you will love abundantly, protect your health, and be adventurous for life. You are beautiful. Let your light shine. Aloha. Aloha.